Hey guys, Jake from 8020 Media here. Today we're going to be talking about the Duramax LMM and the Duramax LML. The LML was the successor to the LMM. GM made a lot of changes to it. It was a very large overhaul with GM stating that approximately 60% of all of the parts and components to the LML are brand new, redesigned and re-engineered over the LMM. So we've got a very different engine here. We're gonna go ahead and compare the two from both a reliability and a performance standpoint. Before we go ahead and talk into the comparison of these two engines, let's go ahead and talk just briefly about what some of the changes were from the LMM to the LML platform. First off, the LML was strengthened a bit. It got a stronger block, stronger rods, stronger pistons, as well as an improved main bearing, which overall makes the LML a little bit stronger of an engine. In addition to that, it got a ninth fuel injector added, which is for DPF regeneration. And then two of the more notable changes are, one, the addition of SCR and DEF fluid, which is a new emission system, and the switch from the CP3 to the CP4.2 injection pump. So with all of these changes, let's go ahead and now jump into how that impacted the performance and the reliability of the LML compared to the LMM. So first looking at the LMM from a reliability standpoint, the LMM mostly had issues with its emission systems. It had common DPF failure and EGR cooler failure. Outside of that, the only other kind of common problem was leaking transmission fluid lines. Another thing that we'll cover later with performance is cracked pistons. These engines are known to crack pistons around 600 wheel horsepower, which isn't a reliability issue in stock form, only if you're looking to do a high horsepower build. The way that I like to refer to it is it's a very reliable engine with a couple unreliable emissions components. Looking at the LML, we got the addition of a new emissions component, which of course is gonna come with its fair share of problems. As we look at common issues with the LML, Two of them are related to the new SCR system, and that is problems with the DEF heater and the DEF pump. Outside of that, you have issues with the nitrogen oxide sensors. And when it comes to the emissions equipment that was already there on the LMM, the LML does run into some of those issues as well. I would say it's less common than the LMM, and it does tend to be at higher mileage. And so I would say the DPF and the EGR systems on the LML are a bit better than the LMM. And then the last problem that I left for the LML is going to be the CP 4.2 injection pump. The CP 4.2 was a step backward from the CP 3 in the sense that it flowed about 20% less fuel, but most importantly, it is known to self implode or grenade itself, which can lead to upwards of about $10,000 of repairs if that ends up happening. Now, it's honestly probably less common than it's made out to be, but it is discussed a lot, but that's because it is a potential $10,000 problem if it does happen. So when we look at the LML, we have an engine that has some emissions related issues, just like the LMM does, but it also has some injection pump related concerns with the CP 4.2. Ultimately, this also, I would say, is a reliable engine, but it's a reliable engine without emissions equipment, and it's a reliable engine without a CP 4.2 if it were swapped back to a CP 3. It's very tough to kind of say which one of these is more reliable than the other. If we looked at both of them as if they were both deleted, if we took the emissions equipment out of it, I would probably pick the LMM, just knowing that it has the CP 3 injection pump if I weren't planning on doing a high horsepower build, just because I don't want that CP 4.2 there if I don't have to have it. But if I had an LML with the CP 3 swapped into it, I would take that over the LMM. So it's just a trade off. There's downsides and upsides to both and really kind of depends what your tolerance level is and what you're looking to do with your truck. Moving into performance, the LML has more performance and more horsepower from the factory. So we're mostly gonna talk about aftermarket performance potential here. As I talked about with the LMM, one of its biggest flaws is the weak pistons. The pistons tend to crack at about 600 wheel horsepower, 
which I will say is a pretty high horsepower level for a diesel engine. By the time you get to 600 wheel horsepower, you've upgraded your injectors, you've upgraded your turbo, you've upgraded your transmission and got a built transmission. So by the time you get to that 600 wheel horsepower level, you're easily 15 grand plus probably of modifications and upgrades into your engine. The 600 wheel horsepower power limit, again, shouldn't really be a concern for the majority of you who are watching this video considering one of these trucks. From a number standpoint, the LML is a stronger engine. The safe limit for the LML is about 700 wheel horsepower, and right around that level is when the LML is known to start cracking pistons as well. So the LML has about 100 extra wheel horsepower of upper capacity. But if we go ahead and dial it back and look at some of the other components and their power limits, both of the engines are very comparable. The Allison 1000 transmissions on both of them can handle about 450 to 500. The stock turbochargers are good for about 525, maybe 550 on them. These other components are very comparable. The one just big difference, again, from a performance standpoint is the fueling system and the injection pumps. The factory LMM fueling system is more capable than the factory LML, and that's because the CP3 flows about 20% more than the CP4.2 does. So the LMM is a little bit more friendly, I would say, if you're looking at doing your basic bolt-on modifications and throwing tuning on there because 500 wheel horsepower on a CP3 scares me a lot less than 500 wheel horsepower on a CP4.2. So when it comes down to it, the LML is a stronger engine. It is a better engine from a performance standpoint if you're looking to do a high horsepower build. You're just gonna want to swap a CP3 into it to do that. If you aren't looking to go crazy and do a high horsepower build and you're just looking to throw some bolt-on modifications and some tuning into it, then the LMM is better off in the sense that it already has the CP3 in it and you don't have to worry about the fueling system like you do in the LML. So you can throw your bolt-on mods and your tune on there and be pretty happy and know that there's not a potential serious problem that could arise with your fueling system that could lead to expensive repairs. It's not that the CP 4.2 can't support 500 wheel horsepower. With a lift pump, it can get close to about 600-ish wheel horsepower. I just wouldn't necessarily be comfortable running one of those pumps to those power levels just because the higher, the closer you get, Get, the more likely they are to run into problems. If we look at the two flaws of these engines from a performance standpoint, the flaw with the LML is the CP 4.2, which you can fix for about $2,500. And the flaw with the LMM is the 600 wheel horsepower capacity on the pistons, which you can get a set of upgraded pistons for $2,500. So again, it's a trade-off with these two. It's hard to say that there's a clear winner in this scenario, but if we're putting it just to pure power potential, and not factoring in the cost of any of these upgrades, then the LML is going to be the winner because it has the extra power capacity. So that kind of covers it for my analysis of reliability and performance on these two engines. I don't have a strong opinion on one over the other. I know a lot of you guys watching this video will, so throw a comment down there and let me know what your opinion is on it. They're very similar engines, not necessarily design-wise, but similar from a reliability standpoint and similar trade-offs from a performance standpoint. In my opinion, it kind of depends what your plans are with your truck, what you're looking to do with it, and what your tolerance is for emissions problems, fuel problems, power limits, and, and all of those considerations that we talked about. Anyways, guys, I hope this was somewhat helpful if you're trying to consider between both of these trucks, and I'm sure there will be plenty of helpful readers that are throwing some comments down below, sharing their opinion on the two, so go ahead and check out those comments as well for some other helpful insights. I appreciate you tuning into this video. If you appreciate this content, we'd love it if you click that like button, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for all of our future videos.